Havoc is back, and Magnus and Dan face off one more time. I am Haru Ren, welcome to my review of episode 11 of Bakugan Legends. So spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Bakugan Legends episode 11. So the first part is wreaking havoc. Wow, they are not subtle about that spelling. I wonder who's coming back to the- Yeah, it's Havoc. He's back to fight for Hanosh in the Battle Judgment. If the title card didn't spoil his return for you, the trailer for the season certainly did. Also, I don't know what this means for the meteor. I know it's a signified Havoc coming back, but the scene is largely pointless because they end up fighting a Vestroya. So Hanosh transports them to Heora, the Chaos Realm, where Dan fights the returning Havoc, voiced once again by Dan Petronajivic, who is magically live-streaming the match and joining Hanosh's team because it's a fight that determines the fate of the world. Why wouldn't he be a part of this craziness? It's showtime! <laughs> <laughs> Dan Petronajivic? Did you think... I'd miss a Baku game that will decide Earth's fate? Of course the Great Havoc had to be a part of it! Even though Dan Petronajivic kind of blended his Strata voice with his Havoc voice, I can tell he still loves performing with his Havoc voice. He just genuinely gives a pretty entertaining performance, not gonna lie. And Havoc got Sabra back, which I assume it's because Hanosh brought it from the past with Nova Energy, because remember, Sabra got split apart at the end of Armored Alliance. During the fight, the fundamental laws of physics have been changed by Havoc because of the defensive energy being gone due to the swarm, which ended up with Drago almost accidentally blasting Leo Shun, Ajit, and Lightning. Also, Havoc rigged the area with explosives. The fact of the matter is, Havoc pretty much made this fight a little bit interesting. But Dan skydives to the place where the energy isn't drained, and in an awesome sequence, he throws Drago to a Nova Fusion Core, giving us a good callback to Armored Alliance. You know, I know this is supposed to be a feel-goody cartoon moment, but Dan jumping like that, and if he ended up missing his role with Drago, he probably could have died there. Dan wins rather quickly, though, and the Mechanoids arrive. Don't ever come back here! You'll miss me! I just know it! Well, he's not wrong there. Pretty much the pacing for this part was rather quick. Almost really felt like the 11 minutes just went by really quickly. First in the beginning we get like sort of a recap of how it's going, and then we get a quick match with Havoc. This really was just to get it over with to get to the final round of the tournament. So the next part is Judgment Night. Dan and the Awesome Brothers are training hard for the final match. Well, I don't think I can fight anymore. Me either. Yeah, the pressure is really building up since Fate of the World and all. Dan thinks about Magnets leaving, but leaving training with him would have been able to make him stronger. If we win the battle judgment, do you really think he'll give all the energy he took back? Of course he won't keep his word. Why are we expecting Hanosh to actually promise this? This part of the story was not really well told. Nobody is expecting Hanosh to actually follow through with the deal. With how Hanosh has been established, it's no way he's going to actually follow through with this deal, even if he wins or loses. The whole point of this story is really just to try and seal him back up. So Hanosh transports them to a volcano field in Darkavia, where Hanosh actually shows up physically. But the final opponent is not Hanosh, it's actually... Magnus, who chose this location because it was where Dan and Magnus fought in Geogon Rising's Battle Judgment. He was fighting alongside us! No he wasn't! He didn't even do anything! Dan and them thinks that Magnus actually has some kind of plan in mind for why he joined Hanosha's team, which is actually an infinite times better than when he was on Villox's side in Geogon Rising. It's almost like the writers for the season were like, yeah, sorry about screwing up Magnus in Geogon Rising, we're going to make it right in Legends. Because in Geogon Rising, Magnus really only wanted to fight Dan to settle a score as rivals and ignored the circumstances if he actually won. But here, there seems to be an actual strategical element to joining Hanosha and fighting Dan, which Dan and the Austin Brawlers actually catch on to. Besides, whether Magnus wins or loses, Hanos is going for the energy regardless. I really would have preferred it if Magnus left because of some falling out and like it was a boiling point of Dan and Magnus' conflicting leadership, then have him revealed as part of Hanosha's team, and then revealed why he joined in the first place because then you'll be able to keep them out of the loop while also remain convincing to Hanosh and also sorta of, kind of fool the audience I guess. And also, wait, Dan and Magnus, ultimate rivals, fighting each other in an epic fight in the middle of a lava field? You are just battle the heroes away from turning this into Revenge of the Sith. But my god, this fight is absolutely epic! Time to continue our ultimate battle! Let's bring it on, Dan Kuzo!
just Magnus and Dan throwing all of their moves at each other. The animation for this fight is just amazing to see. Geogon's clashing, the rollouts, Hanoch definitely put it best here. This is a marvelous battle brawl. Truly fitting for the final chapter! And Dan and Magnus are having moments in their thoughts analyzing each other as if they knew what the other is thinking. And I can tell Julius Cho and Jonah Weinberg is just putting everything they got into their voice performances for this episode. Come on! Yes, we'll decide this battle with... A, a clash, clash of strength! strength. This fight is truly epic and the episode actually finishes on a cliffhanger with Nilius and Drago's strength mode clashing. So that was episode 11 of Bakugan Legends. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. The episode, while quickly paced, was still fairly fun to see. From Havoc's return to Magnus and Dan's epic confrontation, I would have still liked it if Magnus and Dan's build up to this point was actually, like, built up. It really just seems like the whole reason Magnus is even here in the first place is to give Dan a swift kick in the ass, leave, and then come back in an epic fight to make us go, wow, cool fight. They did leave us with a cliffhanger to keep us tuned into the next episode, but regardless with the episode's quality and how it delivered the presentation, I still rather enjoyed the spectacle. Not so much the execution of the build-up, but I'm going to give this episode a high Baku good. Thank you for watching this review of Bakugan Legends. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content because we are nearly done. I am Haru Ren and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!